The Puritan tiger beetle has been disappearing from along the Connecticut River due to dam building and modifications of the river. Now only a small fraction of the once extensive population remains. These insects may be small, but they have a huge focus of a local research scientist who spent the last few years working to rescue the species from extinction. Connecting Point Amanda Levinson and Dave Fraser bring us the story. So what happens here is a first. Nobody's ever done this before. Dr. Roger Gwizdowski and his team are on a mission to save a species. They've teamed up with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife and the states of Massachusetts, Connecticut, Vermont, and New Hampshire to prevent the extinction of the Puritan tiger beetle. So the Puritan tiger beetle is a species, it's one of about 115 species of tiger beetles we've got in North America. But this particular species is only found in the Connecticut River, and this one only has one population left in the southern Connecticut River. So it's in danger of going extinct. The project aims to develop tools and techniques to create a conservation strategy for the beetle's recovery. The idea came about years ago when Gwizdowski was an undergraduate. It started from a class project, and so in this class project, it was a conservation biology class, and every student was asked to create a recovery plan, a fake recovery plan, for a species native to your state. Gwizdowski turned his fake recovery plan into a reality. The project works in a cycle. The team raises larvae in their lab until their last growth stage. Once the beetles hit that stage, they take the population to a site along the Connecticut River where there are no beetles and introduce them to the sand. Hopefully they'll stay over winter, pupate next spring, emerge as adults, and then stay on that site to start a new population. Each fall, the team travels to the river to place the beetles at a carefully chosen site. What we did today was rake out a plot, reintroduce those larvae, and then next week we'll come back to see how many of the larvae have, have uh, established burrows and have set up uh, areas for feeding. The beetles can only survive in a particular habitat, so a major goal of the project is to learn more about what makes for good living conditions. This requires assessment work such as looking at prey availability and sediment size. Part of what we're interested in in that question of what makes good habitat good is both is to ask are there any habitat areas left, but almost more importantly, can we make new habitat or can we modify existing places to become good habitat? Yeah. Could you guys help us grab buckets? Gwizdowski said the concept of reintroduction is fairly new and compares it to the early stages of weather. Weather and weather pattern prediction is something that we all look at every day on our phones, on our televisions, but if we were having this conversation two centuries ago, predicting weather was a big challenge, right? And I think we're at that same point in time for biodiversity inference where it's there, we just can't detect it the same way we can detect weather. The three-year project just finished up this fall and participants hope their recovery work was not in vain. Yeah, we just hope they survive out in the wild, the larvae we put out. We spent so much time caring for them and feeding them. We just hope they survive. Yeah. They even got attached to some of the little guys. Yeah, we had one beetle stubby that we kind of got to know pretty well. Despite all their hard work, there is still a risk that the species could go extinct. Would we notice if they went extinct? I think part of the answer is no, because largely we as a society have not noticed that they've gone extinct for most of their historical reigns throughout the Connecticut. There are, you know, a few of us as state representatives, biologists, who have been looking very closely over the last 20 years and watching this decline happen. Gwizdowski said he hopes the project leaves a lasting legacy. I hope it sets a precedent of possibility that you know, when you have a number of different people and agencies and they come together with this common focus and goal, we can then create these tools and these actions to make this kind of conservation possible. Yeah.